Hey, what's up? My name is Yak, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make awesome city renders like this. I'm not only going to show you, but I'm going to hopefully teach you some things to keep in mind so that you can make your own original scenes and even build out a whole world. Let's get into the video. So when you're making a city render, there's a couple of things that will influence the impact of your render, which are, does this make the audience feel something? And does it make them curious to see more? When you leave some areas in shadow or obscured in some way, it creates room for that curiosity to build. And this is an advantage to us artists because we don't have to show all of the really cool stuff all at once. We only have to show a portion of the city, uh, some of the activity that's going on in that portion, and then hint at other stuff going on elsewhere or in the distance. Some awesome examples from creators that I follow, like this is like a gigantic view of the whole city, but it's kind of tunneled down into a specific section. So you kind of get hints of things at the side of the frame, things beyond kind of like what the focus is here. And it really makes me wonder like what's around that corner or what's behind this thing that's in the foreground. And so that's really good. You know, that's like driving that curiosity and it makes me want to see more. It makes me curious. It makes me even build my own story about what could be happening here. Other great examples are renders like this. Uh, these are really vibrant and bright and kind of got this like sense of epic scale. And you get that scale reinforced to you because there's a human in these renders. So you can really feel, you know, like I'm a human, this person's a human, and I can kind of put myself in the shoes of that character and kind of imagine what it would be like to stand in a place like this. Now let's see how we can apply all of this to our scene in Blender. So first, I think we should decide on a focal point or a landmark piece for our city. A lot of cities in real life and in video games and movies have iconic buildings. A couple of great examples are the One World Trade Center in New York City, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, Tyrell HQ in Blade Runner, the Hospital in Neo Tokyo from Akira, Peach Trees in Mega City from Judge Dredd. You can have one or multiple buildings like this in your city, but in my render, I'm just gonna stick with one. For my scene, this is the building I made. It's actually based on concept art from a really old personal project of mine. I made this building using the same methods I show in my previous videos, which I'll link down below. If you wanna see the full process of how I made this building, that'll go up on YouTube eventually. But if you just can't wait, you wanna see it now, and you wanna get this building for yourself, you can get that on my Patreon. When you're making a city around a building like this, the building itself should have an interesting design and also be one of, if not the largest buildings in your city. This will do three really important things. It'll establish the city center. It will help the sense of scale, giving you and the audience an idea of how big and important the building really is. It will let you know where to put the brightest lights and other landmarks relating to your city or the world. Whenever I'm making artwork, I think about this stuff all the time. Even if it doesn't end up in the final render, thinking about what the world outside of your camera looks like will give you a lot more ideas to play with, a lot more opportunities for new angles and composition, and it will give the audience little clues that there is more going on outside of the camera. With those three rules in mind, let's populate our city with more buildings. I'm going to use these pre-made buildings from my building pack, which come with textures and even window lights for night scenes. You can get these on my Gumroad or you can use your own building models. Again, links to everything down in the description below. So you can see I've already started to kind of flesh out some of the surrounding buildings. Yeah, you can really tell if you look closely that it's really the same couple of buildings, but I'm just like getting some new silhouettes by kit bashing a couple of them or uh, just like rotating them. Like this is, this building is actually made up of two of the same buildings, just kind of joined at the corner. So now it looks like a, a new building. Uh, this one, it's just four of the same buildings stacked on top of each other like boxes. But again, like even if I see just this corner, just this side, it looks a little bit different from 
if it was just that one building on its own. Um, and you can see that there's duplicates. There's this one is like kind of wide and blocky. These two are just like stacked on top of each other. So really just playing and having fun with the with the shapes and not focusing too much on whether it makes a ton of sense. Just looking to fill out the camera angles that I'm looking for. And that's one of the other things I did is I played around with two angles that I like is that this one is kind of from above looking down and having our core focus building in the foreground here. And kind of what I said earlier about, so if I wanted to do this shot right here, I would put like a really bright light here, maybe like a party or there's a bunch of people here. And then everything else would be either in fog or just have like a bit of a darker value so that uh, your eye isn't drawn really to anything else besides that balcony. If I do this angle, which is kind of an opposite angle, it's from below, it's looking up. And I really do like this shot too, because this building here is creating an arrow pointing this way towards this edge. And I know on the inside of this building, I have a bit of emission. So that's gonna be lighting up that edge there. Uh, I like that this building is really blocking off this whole side and there's really nothing for you to look at on this side. So this might be in shadow and this might be in shadow. And then there's just like light that can be light right in the middle. So this is another way to kind of, once you start roughly blocking in your city, you can start to play around with camera angles and see what you think kind of tells the story and makes the biggest impact for you. The other thing to keep in mind, if we look straight down from the top, you can see that there is a bit of break that's happening between the clusters of buildings. I'm also thinking about where the pathways are for cars or for highways or other kinds of things like that. The other thing that's gonna help is that once we start adding lights, we can place the lights in this space between the buildings. And if we do the right composition, something like here, without showing the street, we can have that up lighting shining on the buildings and it can apply busy street activity or something else going on on the street level without really showing it. So this is kind of where my city is looking at right now. And it looks a little bit stretched out. It looks a little bit scattered in one direction. And that's because I have two camera angles here. I have this shot where the buildings, the smaller ones in the city are just like framing this one figuratively and literally like all the other smaller buildings are there just to make the bigger building look good. <laughs> so I really like this shot. It's like very straight on. And then you have all these side buildings creating these lines that kind of draw your eye towards the center. And I like this shot because what I plan to do with the lighting and the fog, I want to try to add a thick layer of volume that's just below this part of the building. I'm like implying that for the residents that have access to this ledge, they can see over the fog and their vision isn't obscured and they kind of have cleaner air. So I think that'll look really cool and it will kind of say something about the city. Now that we have our landmark building with our less important building surrounding it, we can set up the lighting. As I mentioned earlier, we now know roughly where to put most of our lighting. So let's do that. I'm gonna show you my favorite methods for getting good looking city lights. First, I'm going to add the primary lights by placing these really large area lights throughout the city, the brightest ones going between the city blocks and around the main building. Mixing in a couple of smaller area lights for a pop of color and implied activity throughout the other parts of the city. At this stage, you can really get into the world building ideas too, like maybe certain lights represent certain districts, things like that. Then I'm going to do a secondary lighting pass, which are things like window lights and large neon billboards and signs. This is a great time to look at reference and you always should be looking at reference because signs usually sit lower on buildings. So people who are driving or walking can be distracted by them. So the way that I made this texture was actually by bringing a bunch of photos into Photoshop and cutting out the billboards like I wanted. I packed them in close together and then used generative fill to kind of fill in the negative space in between. Then I took that image, brought that in as an emissive plane, and I used the lasso tool to cut out the billboards that I wanted and then separated them into their own objects. If you want to, you can also put signs at the very top of a building, usually the tallest one in the group for better sight lines. And of course, if your city has flying cars, then you can really just put these signs anywhere at that point. 
And when you set up these materials, you're gonna wanna make sure that you plug the color into the alpha because then that will really make it look transparent. And then you can use a color ramp to crush the values of the alpha to get a little bit more contrast. This texture I made actually worked out really well for just busy nightlife lights that I can stick on top of rooftops and on ledges and really add more life to the city besides the neon billboards. You can think of it like photo bashing if you've ever done that. It's a really easy and cheap way to get detail and imply detail, especially for backgrounds like this where it's not the focus. It's a really easy way to fill out the scene without costing you a ton of render time and power. Lastly, I'm going to add a low density volume over the whole city, which will make the lights softer and add a slight fog throughout the city. More density will make it look very moody and dark like Blade Runner, but you also risk losing some of the detail and design of your buildings. And if you want to, you can copy the node setup I have for the volumetric fog here. I like using volume scatter, it's just a lot more simpler. I can mess with the anisotropy, I can mess with the color. That's really all I need and the density. And the density is set up into a gradient texture that is linear. So what that's doing is, yeah, you can see kind of it's darker up here. That means it's less dense here and then it's more dense down here. And I really like having this control because I want to be able to kind of change where the density is and how is it dense at the top or is there a gradual fading in of the thickness of the fog. So texture coordinate into mapping, turn 90 degrees here and it's just a linear texture coordinate, that's it. For the anisotropy, at least I think that's how you pronounce it, the way it works is that the higher the value is, the more the volumetrics are kind of localized around the light sources. So you can see I have a light here and it's really pointing it out. It's nice because it gives it a bit of a bloom as well. So you can go for that if you like it. The opposite side is if it's a lot lower or less than zero, it will kind of wash out all of the lights and make it really soft. So you can play around with it and find what works for you. And lastly, for the color of the volume, that works a little bit different than you would expect. You can see here, if I make it orange, it makes the volume actually blue. And I think what that's doing is it's absorbing that color. So when you select the color, you're basically telling it what color you don't want to be there, and then it will make it the opposite color. Um, I use this orange volume color, which actually is blue, for a lot of my Akira renders, and that's why they look really orange and bright. So. Another one to play around with if you choose to. You can get some really interesting effects and it can impact your art direction too. And now you have this awesome city asset which you can get multiple renders out of. You can continue to add elements and details and build out little areas for world building or you can just fly around and get camera angles of your building and the city. Just remember the tips I shared in the beginning to help you get really interesting shots. So there you have it. I hope I was able to give you some ideas and inspire you to create awesome city renders like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.